Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, I imagine you all are sitting down in your living room uh, in front of your computer. Um, this is our last virtual mini concert and demonstrations. The uh, presentation by the beginning Gamelan class. Uh, of course, I would like to thank CFA staff for producing this event. I'll just give you a little bit of background here. Uh, in the beginning of the semester, I always say to a new Gamelan student that the Gamelan class does not train our student to become professional Gamelan musicians. Had they become professional gamelan players, there will not be enough gamelan gigs to earn enough money to live by. <laughs> uh, so the best terminology for this class is actually gamelan performance, uh, sort of a uh, uh, performance study group, that's what I mean. <laughs> performance study group rather than Gamelan Club. Uh, I must also add a little bit that the class is uh, a process-oriented rather than product-oriented activity, meaning that the emphasis is on the process for understanding the music, uh, playing the music and understanding the culture in day-to-day -day gamelan classes rather than the end result of the work. However, this group, this group of students have worked very hard to make sure that you, you will be assured listening to a great music. Am I right? Yeah. They are always nodding. <laughs> so, uh, last uh, uh, concert I mentioned in our uh, in that concert that understanding a piece based on its name can be a tricky endeavor. This is because very often we don't understand the full meaning of the name of the piece. For example, we have no idea why a piece is entitled Sapu Jagat, which means broom of the world, as the first piece you are about to listen is named. I chose the piece not because of its name, but because musically it is a bit easier to digest for beginning students. In any event, if it happens to be in the case that today's world needs to be cleaned from its filth, that is only coincidental. So enjoy Sabu Jagat.
much I will have to explain to you about the gamelan, but at least you, uh, what you are listening is uh, a piece in a particular kind of scale or tuning system called Slendro, which has five notes per octave. The next piece is going to be in Pelok, which is a different kind of scale than the Slendro, which will you be hearing. Uh, just before we play the piece, I just would, would like to acknowledge the presence of our singers, a group of uh, uh, members of uh, Advanced Gamelan Group here. They join us to sing. Uh, well, uh, uh, actually, we haven't done any singing for the last almost two years because of the restrictions, but we'll be singing a little bit here. Probably you can call it a muted singing because you're wearing the, the mask. Uh, the piece uh, uh, you, we came to play is, uh, uh, this is the next one, is, uh, it's going to be two pieces. Uh, the first one is called Kandang Bubra, and then we'll continue to a piece called Pospanjolo. Uh, Kandang Bubra means ruining stable, ruining stable. Uh, in that piece, it has a, a section, a kind of a bit syncopated rhythm. Perhaps that is why it's called ruining stable. I don't know. But the, uh, the second piece is Pospanjolo. This is a rather uh, poetic name of the piece. Puspo means flower. Jolo uh, is a net for catch, uh, catching fish. So you can imagine if you have ever witnessed people catching fish with a net, a big net. Uh, you can see how the net is thrown to the water and imagine that, that peacefully how the net spreading like the blooming of flowers.
the piece you heard, uh, uh, the first piece is uh, in the cycle of 16 passes per last gong. And that is the way how the gamelan is being composed. The length of the piece is defined by how many passes per last gong. Uh, as you can see, the second piece is a, that was a, six, a 16, but in a very stretched temporal flow. Uh, this, all that is, a, particularly in the second piece, is give you some kind of a, a very calm and peaceful uh, piece to hear. Uh, but not all gamelan pieces express calm and peaceful mood. There are also many light-hearted pieces. The next number is one of them. You can understand its lighted heartiness from its name. Now, this is the one that the name really tells us what it's what is the what the uh, that names uh, uh, the meaning of that name? Uh, it's a, the name is a ruja jero, and ruja is a is a what you call it salad, a salad made of a sour orange. So. <laughs> That's very tasty, I would say. <laughs> Salad made of sour orange. Uh, so this is, uh, this particular piece is really in the name tell us about uh, the, uh, what the, the piece is all about. So enjoy sour salad.
The salad is so spicy that we have to end abruptly. <laughs> uh, okay, this is going to be the last piece for the evening. This is an, an instrument, instrumental piece, uh, like the uh, the previous piece. This is composed in uh, 30, 32 passes per gong cycle. So, uh, and like what I said before about sometimes difficult to get the meaning of the name of the piece and how that correlate to the uh, mood of the piece. This piece is, uh, the title is uh, called Jagung Jagung, and Jagung mean a corn, so many corn, and again, this is something that we don't understand, uh, fully understand how that name correlate to the mood of the piece. So enjoy Chakung Chakung. <laughs> 